In Chapter 11, we read how Louis Pasteur developed a process of heating liquids to kill harmful organisms, a process that was called pasteurization in his honor. After success, Pasteur suffered a nearly fatal stroke. He survived, but his doctor said he would never walk again and that his scientific career was over. Pasteur never gave up, however, and despite the fact that the paralysis of his left side was permanent, in time he was able to walk with the use of a cane. The next scientific problem Pasteur tackled was chicken cholera. Highly contagious, once it struck, farmers' flocks were decimated. Pasteur isolated the bacteria that caused cholera and was able to successfully grow it in chicken broth. A tiny drop of the broth was enough to kill a healthy chicken. He was now certain what caused cholera, but he did not know how to prevent it. After returning from a yearly vacation, he began his experiments afresh. His assistants again gave some of the infected broth to the chickens. This time, the chickens became ill, but did not die. In fact, they recovered quickly. After looking into the matter, the assistants realized that they had taken the broth from an old bottle. Pasteur had an idea. Perhaps the old bacteria was weakened and caused a mild case of cholera and thereby vaccinated the chickens against cholera in the same way that cowpox bacteria, being weaker than smallpox, vaccinated against smallpox. To test this hypothesis, he had each of the hens who had been given the old broth injected with fresh cholera bacteria. To everyone's amazement, the chickens didn't become sick at all. Even though Edward Jenner had based the term vaccination on the Latin word for cow, vaca, and Pasteur was dealing with the disease that affected chickens, he used the same term as a tribute to Jenner. Though it was found later that Pasteur's vaccination did not work consistently, his discovery was the springboard to his next investigation. Now Pasteur turned his attention to the development of a vaccine for anthrax, Robert Koch had identified the bacteria that caused anthrax. Farmers complained that cows were dying after grazing in cursed fields where sheep that had died from anthrax were buried. Pasteur thought that perhaps earthworms were bringing the bacteria to the surface. He examined earthworms from these fields and found the anthrax bacteria present in their excrement, proving he was correct. To date, there was no known way to weaken the anthrax bacteria for use in a vaccination. Pasteur decided to try to develop a weaker bacteria. In 1881, he discovered that by carefully heating the anthrax bacteria to a specific temperature, the bacteria grew old, weak, and unable to form spores. On March 21st, he announced he had successfully vaccinated sheep. Veterinarians and farmers alike refused to believe him, and some went so far as to label Pasteur as a fraud. Veterinarians called for a field test of this vaccine. The public experiment was begun on May 5th when the first inoculations were given. Fifty sheep were brought to a field in France for the experiment. Pasteur injected 25 of the sheep with the weakened virus. The other 25, being the control group, were not given anything. This procedure was repeated on May 17th. Then, on May 31st, all 50 of the sheep were injected with the fresh, virulent strain of the vaccine. On June 2nd, the official result was observed. All of the vaccinated sheep lived, while the unvaccinated ones either had already died or were dying. Louis Pasteur's triumph was the talk of Europe. Pasteur then turned his attention to the dreaded disease of rabies. Rabies was caused by the bite of a rabid or mad dog or other mammal. While a person who had bitten might not contract the disease, it was always fatal if they did. A dog with rabies foamed at the mouth and became vicious. The dog was unable to drink. The sight of water would drive the thirsty dog into a frenzy, 
which caused the disease to be named hydrophobia, a Greek word meaning fear of water. Pasteur was certain that the disease affected the nervous system, which caused the animal to lose control of its tongue and thereby unable to drink. He could not find a way to grow the organism associated with rabies outside of a living creature, so he chose rabbits as the host animal. Then he began to search for a way to weaken the virus. Success finally came by removing the spinal cord of a rabbit that had died of the disease, hanging it in a clean jar and keeping the material hot and dry. After 14 days, rabies finally lost its strength. Now Pasteur faced another difficulty. Wild animals carried the disease as well as domesticated ones. All of the wild animals could not be vaccinated, so what could be done? Knowing that rabies worked slowly, he decided to give the vaccine to a person after they were bitten. It was a gamble, but he believed the vaccine would produce immunity in time to save the person's life. Though the vaccination had been tested on dogs, it had never been tried on humans. Before Pasteur had the opportunity to do so, a desperate mother came to him. Her nine-year-old son had been viciously attacked by a rabid dog. The boy... Joseph Meister had barely survived the bite wounds. The mother begged Pasteur to administer the vaccine, as without it her son was doomed. Pasteur consulted two other doctors for their opinions. They determined that the boy was certain to die without the vaccination. Dr. Jacques Grancher began the inoculations. Over a period of ten days, twelve doses were administered. The first injection was made from material which had been weakened for 14 days, with each succeeding one stronger than the last. The final injection contained the full-strength virus. Even if the boy hadn't contracted the disease from the bite, this injection would give it to him. All waited. Pasteur believed in the success of his vaccine, and he was proved to be correct. In time, the boy went home with no trace of rabies. When people heard of the successful vaccination, Pasteur was flooded with victims of dog bites. The people of France set up an organization to help handle the cases. They began to collect money to build a new research laboratory for Pasteur. When the news spread, donations began to come in from all over the world, including America, the Tsar of Russia, the Emperor of Brazil, and the Sultan of Turkey. The Pasteur Institute opened on November 4, 1888. Joseph Meister, the boy who had been saved by Pasteur's rabies vaccination, grew up to work at the Institute. Although Pasteur never went to medical school, he is considered by many as the greatest doctor of all time.